All right, everybody, this is uh, Quick Bites again with Sir Anthony F. Buzzard. So, Anthony, today we're going to do hopefully a quick bite, although these are mm -hmm. big subjects, I guess. So there has been this ongoing debate, as you know, Anthony, about when basically the, the question boils down to, or you have boiled it down to, when is the tribulation? So we have so-called uh, pre-trib people, pre-tribulation people. We have post tribulation people and then we have the thing about the rapture pre-rapture post-rapture and all kinds of things so but the question should be when exactly does the bible tell us is the great tribulation uh carlos first of all we must define our terms very precisely the question is about the great tribulation christianity speaks of tribulation for all of us all the time However, the great tribulation in Matthew 24, 21, and the equivalent in Mark 13, uh, verse 19, I think it is, yes, is specifically the great tribulation. Also in Revelation 7, 14, Jesus there speaks of the great tribulation. The question is, is this in our future or is it past? And then you referred to the question of the rapture. That's a separate question. Unfortunately, the term rapture these days is taken by many to mean a pre-Great Tribulation rapture. That's totally unfair. We all believe in a catching up to meet the Lord in the air. We all believe that. That's what it says in 1 Thessalonians 4. However, we don't all believe in a rapture pre-Great Tribulation. Many of us believe in a rapture post-Great Tribulation. So keeping the vocabulary clear is essential, I think, to sensible discussion of this. And I'm here simply to make this point. Jesus himself defines the great tribulation for us. In Matthew 24, verse 21, he says, Then there will be a great tribulation such as has never been and never will be again. First point is you cannot have two of these. It's a unique time. You cannot have two of them. It's in verse 21, uh, the one I'm referring to. You're finding it there very nicely in a number of translations in verse 21. Then there will be a great tribulation, such as has not been, I'm reading from ESV there, not been from the beginning of the world until now, and never will be. That's unique. Can't have two. The question is, where is Jesus getting this from? Also, oh, cross references. Also, okay. Anthony, sorry to cut you up, but also no, no. Um, okay. there's a debate also in terms of the... Um, the um, the length of the great tribulations. Many people believe we are living in this great tribulation. Well, that's the point we're dealing with. Is it future or past? Well, is it past, uh, present, or future, or has it been going on since Jesus said it? Okay, I'm going to deal with that point expressly. But right, I'm I'm amazed at what we see on on your screen here. Daniel twelve one is where it comes from. Daniel 12.1 speaks of the Great Tribulation, a unique time. There it is. It's a time of distress, tribulation, such as not happened from the beginning of nations until then. And at that time now, note carefully, at that time, your people are going to be rescued. And what does the next verse say? Daniel 12, verse 2. Next verse, verse 2. Many of those sleeping in the dust of the ground. All right, 12.2 is what we're looking at next, 12.2. My point is a very easy one. The Great Tribulation is defined by Daniel as immediately preceding the resurrection. Don't talk about AD 70, that's not going to work. There was no resurrection of the dead in AD 70. Jesus has defined this Great Tribulation by reference to Daniel. Daniel defined it for him. And then let's go the other direction and say, what verse comes before Daniel 12, 1? And the answer is Daniel 11, 45, which is the death of the final king of the north, the final bad guy. So in chapter 11, 45, he comes to his end in Israel. Immediately following then, you have in verse 1 of Daniel 12, the great tribulation. And immediately following that, You've got the resurrection of the dead. That's precisely how we define that series of events. None of that will fit for AD 70. Not possibly. 
There was no resurrection of the dead in AD 70. There was no death of the king of the north in AD 70. So Jesus has, do, has done the work for us by citing Matthew 12, sorry, Matthew 24, verse 21, and Mark 13, verse 19, by quoting Daniel verbatim, by the way, word for word. Jesus has now located the Great Tribulation as future to us. Certainly not AD 70. Let me tell you why it couldn't be AD 70. Because Mark particularly makes it clear in his version, or the Matthew does the same, that those days of the Great Tribulation will be a time impossible for pregnant women. Those days of the Great Tribulation is very tough on pregnant women. Surely everybody knows that couldn't be thousands of years. So. My simple point to you here is you cannot begin the Great Tribulation in 70 AD. If you do, you're stuck with putting a resurrection in 70 AD. That won't work. If you do begin in 70 AD, you're stuck with saying that it's been ongoing for 2,000 years, tough times for pregnant women. That's obviously not right. No, the Great Tribulation, as the earliest church fathers also understood, the earliest pre-mill, classical, pre-millennial, early church fathers, Irenaeus, Lactantius, Victorinus, and others. We have a nice article at my site on the church fathers and the great tribulation or the great uh, the, the issue of the church fathers in our prophecy section. Look at that carefully. This isn't very difficult. It's only when you make the mistake of thinking that AD 70 is somehow involved here that the whole thing falls apart. Jesus is asked a very simple question. What will be the sign of your coming? Parousia, I suggest we use the Greek word here. Parousia, which means coming, second coming, visible second coming. There's only one of those, not two. Only one. Only one great tribulation, only one visible second coming. So, what will be the sign of your parousia and end of the age? Notice no article, not the end of the age even, simply one idea. That's one single concept. The end of the age, the end of the age, the end of the age, and the second coming. Then check the references to the end of the age in Matthew. They are always invariably in the future, never ever in 70 AD. So what will be the sign? What can we expect to happen in anticipation of that great event? We're still watching that very carefully because the end of the age has not happened. The second coming has not happened. And there we are dealing with millions of Jehovah's Witnesses who believe that Christ came back in 1914 or 1918. We're dealing with pre great tribulation rapture people. We must spell out the terms pre-tribulation, great tribulation rapture people who think that Christ could come back today. And I say, no, he cannot come back today because the great tribulation and the man of sin in Paul, the abomination of desolation, who is a person, by the way, an individual, that's Mark 13, 14, the man of sin, the abomination of desolation, desolation standing in the holy place, the equivalent in Mark, standing where he, masculine pronoun there, check your translations carefully, they're trying to hide things from you. It's a he, it's a man of sin. Finally, let me say this, Paul and Jesus are exactly on the same wavelength here. They are classical pre-mill people. They simply look forward to the coming of the man of sin prior to the second coming. Second Thessalonians 2 is the relevant passage here. Paul was fa facing exactly the same issues that we are today. And Paul is saying, some of you think the parousia, the second coming, has already happened, or it could be next couple of hours. It's wrong. Let me tell you, because you're getting all upset, all disturbed. Relax, he says, to this extent, relax. He says the second coming cannot happen until, first of all, the man of sin appears. And that man of sin in 2 Thessalonians 2, 8, is going to be killed by Jesus at the parousia of Jesus. My goodness, surely nobody thinks that somebody living in the first century could be killed by Jesus at his parousia. Think about that. Paul fixes the point about the man of sin, the abomination of desolation, the antichrist, the single antichrist, quite firmly, 2 Thessalonians 2.8, he gets killed by the brightness, the outburst, the shining bright of Jesus' parousia, 2 Thessalonians 2.8. All of this is easy. However, we must not get dislodged in our thinking about a single point. That is that Jesus didn't know the day or the hour. In Acts 1-7, he says, it's not for you to know 
the times, the long distance times and the individual points, not for you to know that. Didn't know. He didn't know. Jesus didn't know. When they asked him about the end of the age and the second coming in Matthew 24, 3, they didn't know. They assumed rightly, because Jesus had taught them that and Daniel had taught them that, that trouble in the temple meant the end of the age and the second coming. They knew that. They didn't know there might be 1,500 more temples there. He doesn't claim to know that. As it turns out, AD 70 was not the end of the age, was not the parousia. Yes, there was a terrible time of trouble, but note that in Luke 21, 31, the end game of this whole prophecy, the end point, the objective of this whole prophecy is when you see all these things happening, like the Great Tribulation, the prior preaching of the gospel in the whole world and so on, when you see that happening, then you ought to know that the kingdom of God is about to come. Luke 21, 31. When you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, we saw that, but it wasn't the end of the age. What has been neglected is that there's a surrounding of Jerusalem by armies in Zechariah also in the future. Chapter 13 of Zechariah, chapter 14 of Zechariah. People rush to the conclusion that Jesus is speaking about 70 AD. He's not. Final point would be this. There are no less than 12 references to that final heptad, that final seven years of Daniel 9. There are 12 of them. Five of them appear there in Revelation and seven of them in the book of Daniel. You need to work on each one. And what you'll find is that there's an amazing half of that period of seven is involved with the Great Tribulation, the second half. That's the time when the Antichrist, who will have fooled the people into making a covenant with them, the beginning, Halfway through, he turns out to be a beast, and then all hell breaks loose, the Great Tribulation. Following that, Jesus will intervene and begin to rule the world of the kingdom of God. This is a brief outline, I think, of what should happen and what will happen. We need to know this. In order to have the mind of Christ, Jesus cannot come back today. There's been no final preaching of the gospel in the whole world. There's been no appearance of an abomination standing where he ought not to, Mark 13, 14. When that happens, then you know that the Great Tribulation is about to happen, and 2429 of Matthew is crystal clear. Beyond any possible argumentation, immediately after the tribulation of those days, Mark has it even clearer. In those days, after that tribulation, not another one that you made up, after the Great Tribulation, immediately following that, the Son of Man will appear in the sky, cosmic signs, and the parousia. Easy point. The parousia means the resurrection of the dead. That's Daniel 12, verse 1, 22, and 2. The parousia means the end of the age, which is not 70 AD. The 12 occurrences of that last final seven years, all of them preclude anything of 70 AD. Simple point is 2 Thessalonians 2 8, Jesus is going to destroy the man of sin at his, Jesus's, parousia. That's to clinch the deal for everybody. Have fun studying that because it's important to have the mind of Christ. The mind of Christ will give you energy and life, even longer life. And we all need to have a passion for truth in order to be saved. Second Thessalonians 2.10. All right, thank you, Anthony. And that was a longer version of Quick Bites. So mm -hmm. see you next time. <laughs>